I'm Shelly Yoder, and I am the state senator for Senate District 40, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Back in 2012, I had never run for anything, and to run for U.S. Congress seemed like a lofty goal, but what inspired me was inaction when it came to the climate crisis. And initially that's what catapulted me into running for public office. But I was also very concerned that when I looked at the people who were running and representing me, I didn't see anybody who looked like me and representation matters. And so I decided to run. During the long-term sessions, which happens every other year, we are, we are tasked with setting Indiana's state budget for the next two years. So that's why we take more time and it, it's a long session. So the rest of the time, a typical day in my office, I have, we, we have Senate District 40. We have a, an incredible legislative assistant that helps me and you field questions, problems, concerns, from getting a driver's license to getting unemployment insurance to maybe you need protections uh, in some way uh, like for housing or you want to go back to school and you're having a hard time uh, accessing the, the education reimbursement program that perhaps the state offers, whatever the problem may be. And maybe it's not even a state issue, but you can call my office and we have a legislative assistant who helps me, helps you field those calls, those emails and those letters and finds some answers, hears what's important to you and helps me better able serve the people of Senate District 40. It's sometimes not so clear and sometimes it is. Uh, sometimes it's um, a, an issue of trying to figure out you take a constituent of somebody's problem and you figure out who would be best suited to answer this question or solve this problem. And so we have different liaisons and different state agencies that we can call and say, this is our problem. Can you help us solve this? And if they say no, typically they can direct us in the, in the, correct, uh, in the correct way and put us on a better path forward but many days it's just problem solving, it's troubleshooting. And we work with all agencies, if it's a federal issue, but they called our office, we will help them get into contact with their, their Congress person. If it's a local issue, but they called our office, we will help put them in touch with their city or county council or commissioner representative. So it is a, it is a, a role where I like to say yes, we are tasked with setting policy in Indiana, but we are also tasked with helping people who live within the district and live in Indiana make their lives better. Making sure you take the time to develop the relationships with your colleagues and with the people that you're working with. And one of the challenges that, we, that I had, I'm new to this job. And so my first year it was COVID. And so that changed the way we did work together. We did a lot more Zoom sessions, uh, online meeting. Uh, we also, and I know many students know what having to learn online, how difficult and challenging that can be. We also wore masks. And that is a challenge. I didn't know what they looked like to begin with. And then I could only see just a portion of their face. However, there's so much that we can do, you know, really working hard to read someone's body language, listening to what they're saying, finding ways that we can connect in what we have in common, finding values that we share, and then working off of that. So maybe the biggest challenge is, is so much like what it's like when you're trying to have a good relationship with anyone and that's, it takes work. And the challenge is taking the time, slowing down to build those relationships. And the challenge is in my position, there are so many relationships that I need and want to have that it's a matter of setting the time and making the time to 
build those relationships. Hearing a concern or a problem that somebody has uh, and they just, they need help. I had a caller, uh, that sounds like I run a radio show. I don't run a radio program, but I had someone call my office and this mother had an adult child who had uh, physical disabilities that she required in-home care and her, her care providers were not able to access the COVID-19 vaccine as quickly. And the challenge was as Indiana was rolling out the vaccinations, uh, her adult child didn't fall into a category that actually put her into receiving the vaccine early on. And her care providers considering their care and it was constantly changing. This is something that we need to address in the state of Indiana is how can we have continuing uh, continuity of care. But I was able to figure out a way to access um, the, get this person access to a vaccine and, and connect them with the right people so that she could be protected with people coming in and out of her home and you know, make sure that this young adult had what she needed uh, in order to s- stay as well and as protected as she possibly could. And that sh- her mom sent us pictures when she was getting her vaccine, her mom sent us pictures of her receiving the vaccination. And it just, it felt so good because I knew that, uh, that this person's life was much improved and it made a difference with the family, it made a difference with the care providers. And that's just a, a snapshot into the, the, the best parts of this job. And studying policy, studying what we need to tweak, alter, create in order to make Indiana a better place for all. I think that's where I find the most, the greatest need um, in my job, of course, serving people, but um, I'm so thankful that I have you know, a legislative assistant who can help field those calls. And we also have people who can help me uh, craft and work together to create policy that will make Indiana a better place. And so I think that's where I spend a lot of my time is making sure I understand what's there, what's possible, and what's best for Indiana. I think what's interesting is in the state Senate, we have a long way to go for parity and representation. And as I said, representation does matter. And we need a state legislature that reflects how Indiana looks. And that's going to be, I think, an ongoing challenge. We also need to recognize that Indiana is in a supermajority of the Republican Party, even though as we vote in general elections, Indiana isn't a supermajority state in one party, and yet our state legislature reflects otherwise. So we're trying to draw attention to this. This is a redistricting year, and what that means is, you know, when we take the numbers of uh, the, the census that we are constitutionally bound to do every 10 years, then we take that information and we draw district lines. But we want to make sure that those district lines are drawn fairly and are drawn independent of incumbents. That's what I am, big word, but I am an incumbent. Uh, They should be drawn independently of who is serving in that district. Uh, We also want it to be drawn independent of political party. We want it to be drawn so people can elect their representatives versus representatives drawing maps that say, these are the voters that I want electing me. And that's a significant difference, but that also is a recipe for a strong democracy. So I think those are the challenges that I want people to realize is we have an Indiana that has work to do when it comes to truly reflecting 
who, what Indiana is and who we are and what we look like and what we stand for. And we're very practical means um, our, our state laws, if you will, uh, what we write and pass every year, what we uphold uh, to be constitutionally strong. I mean, that is what we are tasked to do. And that's what you elect me to do is to represent you and your family, your voice in the state Senate in Indiana. And that's what we have. That's what we must do is to work hard to make sure that we uphold the constitution. And the constitution is that all people are created equal. So looking for ways to bring greater equity, greater, greater representation, make sure that our, whether it's access to education, healthcare, health outcomes, education outcomes, employment, employment opportunities, that all of that is accessible to all, not just to a few, but to everyone, and that there is equity in the system. If you have never thought about running for public office, I encourage you to give it some thought. What would your future look like if you would take on the goal of running for public office? Maybe it's going to be for US Congress or maybe it's for Indiana State Senate, like where I serve. But we also need people serving on our school boards. We need people serving on our county councils and our township boards. There are so many ways for you to serve your community. And I hope you'll challenge yourself to consider all the ways that you can put your gifts and talents to work to better Indiana.